Canadian real estate buyers might be making a huge mistake, and we're going to break that down in today's video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom Story. I run a real estate team in the city of Toronto, and if you watch this video and learn anything new, all that I ask is you throw us a like and subscribe to our growing community. If you live in the Toronto real estate market and you're looking to get advice on what you should be doing with all the external factors going on, all the noise going on, and you want to connect with a professional that's on the ground level every single day, you can go into the first link in the description, book a time with me that works for you. This video is certainly not a video telling buyers right now that right now is the time to buy for you because I don't know, like nobody knows exactly what's going to happen now. But it is going to discuss three potential outcomes that I think buyers are waiting for right now before they jump into the market. I'm going to show you a few graphs and breakdowns in today's videos that are showing you what's really going on on the ground level. And this is for the Toronto market, but these numbers can easily be calculated for any market across Canada. The sales numbers have been exceedingly low this year, like how many transactions are happening uh, we're going to be down 20% compared to 2022. We're already down 40% compared to 2021. Now, 2021 is that banner year we're probably not going to see at least for another decade, but it is something that's happening. And when we saw less sales happen in September and October hasn't been a great month compared to August, that's when we were like, okay, maybe there's going to be now serious pressure on prices. Now, saying all that, I wanted to share with you what I've actually been seeing. Okay, so we have several properties on the market right now. We've sold three of them in the last week. The new listings that we've been bringing to the market, the showing action on them has been higher than it previously was. I don't really think it was because of the rate hold, but who knows what's going through buyers' minds. But there is action out there. Now, I was not selling real estate in 2008. I got my real estate license in 2014. But what I did is I reached out to a lot of agents that I knew and I asked them, hey, in 2008, with all the uncertainty, like, were you even getting showings on your properties? And they're like, no, like it was crickets. And then talking to agents that have been doing this a lot longer than me in 1989, as things were kind of tailing off and really going down, they were like, honestly, it was almost impossible to bring a deal together. I'm not saying this isn't 2008. I'm not saying this isn't 1989. I don't know what this is. All I'm saying is that the buyers are out there. Like we're getting showings and talking with colleagues, their open houses are fairly busy on the weekend. So it's not like no one's showing up. It's just the buyers are no longer buying on fear. Like it used to be fear-based buying what was going on in the real estate market. Now they're buying with logic and they're also buying with the fact that they're being stressed at a way higher level based on their mortgage qualifications. Earlier in the year when the Bank of Canada held the rates twice in a row before going up in the summer, we saw an explosion of activity. We saw prices go up. We saw inventory drop. Bank of Canada has now held rates twice in a row again, but I want to show you why I don't think the activity is going to pick up like it did earlier in the year. And here's the reason why. So 2023 has been a wild year, and I think we forget, like in March, the SVP bank and all the things that were happening in the States, the bond market significantly went down. And a lot of the talk on YouTube channels and the media is like what Bank of Canada is doing. And for you watching this channel, you're probably well aware that when Bank of Canada increases or decreases the rates, it's only impacting the variable rate mortgage section of the market. It has nothing to do with the fixed rate. Now, the fixed rate is based on the five year bond yield. There's a few reasons why now is different than before. Now, earlier in the year, yes, the Bank of Canada overnight rate was only 4.5 instead of 5% like it is today. So yes, the variable rate is higher. But if you look at October numbers with the bond yield, it's been over four for a while here. And if we go back to April and May, when things were really picking up, it was under three certain times. So you could get a fixed rate in March for four and a half, five percent 5%. It wasn't just March, it was March, April, May. But September, October, likely November and December, because the bond yields are higher, the fixed rates are six, six and a half percent. So it's costing a lot more to take on a property. We haven't yet seen the decreases to kind of match that difference in prices. But that's why this market is not taking off like it did earlier in the year. The second thing I want to talk about was a chart that I'd showed. I'm gonna go through this very, very quickly because I've already talked about this on the channel. This was current condos on the market in downtown Toronto. And a lot of people were kind of amazed by this. And so was I, where it's like 73% of active listings are either vacant or tenanted. So you could say over 70% of active condo listings are investors trying to liquidate. Now, not all vacant properties 
are investors. Sometimes people just move out. But what I was thinking too is I actually know this, that sometimes even when a property is vacant, you won't put vacant on it for safety reasons. You'll put owner occupied. So I do think like when you calculate all the potential things together, yes, 75% of properties on the market right now for condos are investors. So yeah, you're going to see pressure on condo prices to go down at least till the end of the year, unless the inventory changes. But I thought like, okay, a general scope of the market, condos are important, but what about freehold properties? So I did this same breakdown for active listings right now in the city of Toronto for freehold housing. Vacant was 26%, tenant was 14%, owner occupied was 52%, and then owner tenant mix was 5%, and partial, I don't even really know what that means, was 3% of the market. So this goes back to where I started the video. Is a buyer or potential buyer right now making a mistake by waiting? And the answer depends on what you're trying to buy. I think the argument could be made if you're looking to buy a condo, at least between now and the end of the year, you can be patient. You can wait for the right opportunity to arise, something that ticks off all the boxes. If you're looking to buy a freehold property, well, there's not going to be as much pressure on these freehold properties because more of them on the market are owner occupied or vacant and vacant for freehold. A lot of the times too is like estate sales. It's not necessarily all investors. So just something to keep in mind, like depending on what you're buying, will be indicative of the decision that you have to make now moving forward. I did a video probably over a year ago where I looked over the kind of like the last 40 years in Toronto real estate, right? And we had the the 10 year kind of drop off and jump up back in prices in 1989. It actually didn't get there for 13 years till 2002 for the 1989 peaks. Then 2008, we had the 2017 drop off. Now we've had the 2022 rate hikes. We've had so much happen. And but through all of that, if you average it all out for the greater Toronto real estate market, we're still averaging about 6.8% appreciation per year. Now, some years are extremely high, some years are extremely negative, and quite a few years are just a little bit up or a little bit down. Now, taking all that into consideration, based on us understanding right now that the peak of the real estate market for most of Canada was February 2022, and we have seen prices come off since then. But what you're looking at here, and I'll break this down. So what it's showing in this right column is this is today's price. Now, this is the actual average price of today from January till the end of September. And this is taking all the properties that have sold in the greater Toronto area. It's not just one month of stats, taking every property that has sold so far this year and giving you an average price. Now, if we then go down over here to 2003, so that was 20 years ago, right? 2008 was 15 years ago. 2013 was 10 years ago. And 2018 was five years ago. So what this chart is showing you is these were the average prices during those years. So 2003 was 291, 2008 was 382, 2013 was 520, and 2018 was 786. If we put the historical average, right? And this is all the good years and all the bad years for over 40 years of data, which was 6.87%. And we put it on where prices should be today. It's very interesting to see kind of where it's landed. So if we go, okay, the last decade, we're $122,000 more expensive than we should be based on 40 years of historical data. Okay, that was the last decade. If we go the last 15 years, we're $95,000 more expensive than we should be. But if you look at the last 20 years, we're 2.9% higher or $31,000 more expensive than we should be. If you go back to 2018, we're only $36,000 more expensive than we should be based on the 40 year average. So it's interesting. And, and you could look at this and go, okay, well, this means that there's still a room for prices to drop off because for all four examples, you know, 2015, 10 and five years, the price is still higher today than it was previously. Now, these change all the time, depending on how you look at these numbers. And credit to my brokerage that put this together and Chris Slightum, he did a great job. And I think this is a really, really good illustration. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is a very simple question. If you're a buyer and you're waiting, what are you waiting for? Now, this is not the part of the video where I give you a sales pitch to buy. I just wanna talk through a few scenarios with you. Okay, so let's talk about scenario number one. You're on the fence right now to get into the market and you believe that interest rates will continue to go up, there will be more pressure on interest rates, which will push prices down. If you believe that, if you are a cash buyer, you should wait, right? Because it makes a lot of sense. You'll get it at a much lower price. 
But if you're a mortgage buyer, which is like a good percentage of people that buy properties, just run the numbers, like be educated about this. So if the interest rates went up to where you think they're going to go, how far down would prices have to drop where the monthly payment of owning that property is different than it would be today? I think that's information that you would need to know. And then keep in mind that with the stress test, wherever you believe the interest rates are going to be, you're, well, you're being stressed at 2% higher. So would you even qualify at that point? Right. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two would be, okay, you don't believe interest rates are going to change a lot from now, but you think that interest rates are going to stay where they are. But because of the buildup of inventory of active listings, because all the investor listings, you believe that prices will go down. So in this scenario, what you got to figure out is, well, what type of property are you trying to buy? What was the inventory like earlier in the year? What is the inventory like today? And at what part of the market are you? Are you fundamentally balanced? Are you fundamentally sellers? Are you fundamentally buyers? Because this question for you, if you're waiting, what are you waiting for? It's all gonna depend on what type of property you're trying to buy and where it is located to then answer, well, should you just get it now or should you wait? And you'll know the answer once you run the numbers on the areas that you're focused on. Now, the third scenario is that you think to yourself, well, you know what? I'm just gonna rent for a few years until things cool down and then I'm gonna jump in the market. And there could be you know, tons of different variables why prices would go down in a few years. But the difference between now and before is that the one thing that has continued to go up in price over the last few years, even when prices have dropped off since the peak, has been the rental prices. And you can point very clearly to the population growth of this country and the fact that we are not building fast enough to why they are in this position about the rentals. So it's just looking, okay, well, five years ago, based on the average price versus what it would cost to rent in your market, where were things at? Because today I can guarantee you, yes, the average price is higher than five years ago by a probably decent percentage, but I guarantee you the rental price is a lot higher than it would have been. So the alternative is there to rent. It is just gonna cost you more now than it previously did. And scenario number four is gonna kind of wrap all of these together and put a bow on it. So you believe that there's gonna be many different factors that will put pressure on pricing, but the big thing, the thing that we're waiting for that's gonna collapse everything and really, really drop prices is gonna be by the end of 2025, early 2026, everybody, all Canadians with mortgages will feel the new rates because whether they had a five-year fixed rate at 1%, it doesn't matter because now it's coming up. And you believe that when that happens, a flood of listings will hit the market and you could be right. So I don't know if you're making a mistake right now or not. I think you have to figure out what scenario do you fall in? What are you waiting for? And the reality being that you shouldn't be buying a property at all if you're not going to own it for minimum five years. We got to think long, long term here with real estate always. Hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was informative. A little bit of a rambly one, but I hope I got my point across. Thank you for watching. My name is Tom Story. And remember, home is where your story begins.